I would say what we need to do now that the language of diversity and difference and even inclusion, all words, which by the way, I use often, I think we need to think harder about what those mean. I think that we, and by saying we, I mean all of us who care about the classrooms that we're in and the world in which those classrooms exist and which those classrooms help create, because we all leave the classroom sometime, I think we got to get real clear on what our values and commitments are beyond using just buzzwords. I mean that those values and commitments, we've got to do the work to define them rigorously and to conceive them radically. Now, I want to stop on that word radical for a second, because earlier on, I used the term radical in a way to describe a kind of radical left movements, and I stand by that there. But when I say radical here, I'm not talking about backing a radical left or a radical right agenda. I'm talking about radical in the sense of getting to the root of things, right? Radical as looking at the root problems, at root meanings, at root causes of the difference of the of the uh, social ills that we're theoretically trying to solve by talking about diversity and difference and equity, etc. So. I've done a little bit of thinking about what I think some of those values and commitments should be. And I think it's interesting also to think that, you know, historically, when people talk about teaching values in education, it's usually conservatives that are doing that, actually. Historically, it's usually been conservatives that have said, we've got to go back to teaching patriotism and individualism, and it's the left that has taken over schools. And with that, the teaching of values has gone out the window. I think this is bipartisan and far bigger than politics. But some of the commitments that I think uh, are, uh, I, some of the commitments that I think are important or at least merit much of this rigorous definition and radical conception are commitments that are individualistic, commitments that are civic, anti-racist, feminist, that word a lot of people don't want to use, the other F word, cosmopolitan. And I say cosmopolitan, I almost wrote globalist, but I think that's become way too charged these days. Cosmopolitan in the sense of not parochial, looking outside the world and the space that you come from and that you inhabit to gain a grander sense of the world. And also, big caps, uh, caps on purpose, intellectual. That set of, um, to me, the most noble work that we can do as teachers and students is to engage critically, to ask questions about meaning, about what are we really doing here, not just to use big words, but to ask why are we using those words, what do they mean, how have they changed over time, and how do they serve us, and how don't they serve us anymore. So that intellectual commitment as well. And then the last thing that I'll say, because education in this country has always been and has continues to be fiercely, fiercely local, is attentive to local circumstance and to meaning of those local circumstances. You know, whenever I go, I've never given this exact talk before, but I talk about these issues at colleges everywhere, and I really try to do a little bit work uh, of work about the place that I'm going because the focus, I think, um, of this, what sound, might sound like a universal message, really depends on context so much, right? We might be able to agree on all of these, um, on, on that these are, you know, noble commitments to have, but the way those are going to play out in different classrooms and in different communities is paramount. And I think, I know I talked to some people before who are going on to be teachers. I think an attention to the local and also to co-creating the meaning of these terms and these commitments and of these pedagogies in, with the communities that you're in, but also with your interlocutors, even on a day-to-day -day basis, is absolutely crucial.